By the time this video is uploaded, about 5 days have passed since Santa Monica revealed the new story trailer for God of War Ragnarok. And by now we've all had more than enough time to watch it over a hundred times and geek out with fellow God of War fans. But as I'm sure you guessed it, there are still a couple of things we need to discuss. And the question I keep having the most is, why is Kratos saving Freyr? Yeah, we're going deep into theorizing today, so sit back and enjoy. Hey, how's it going guys? Captain Cuba here and welcome to another God of War video. Today marks the start of the aftermath of the God of War Ragnarok trailer. This is the time when we've all had enough time to watch the trailer in a calm and reasonable manner and come up with equally reasonable theories. This trailer is chock full of details to discuss, but I wanted to start with this moment. Because to me this moment is one of the weirdest ones from the trailer. For one thing, Atreus is nowhere to be found, and Kratos is helping someone who's not Atreus nor himself. The only time I vaguely remember Kratos helping someone was that random guy from the island of Delos. Cory Barlog has even stated in all interviews that Kratos is not about to become altruistic, so whoever he's saving here, he's not doing it out of the goodness of his heart, meaning that they will most likely be an integral part to his plan. But before we can say what his role in the story will be, we're first gonna have to find out who he is. And if you read the title of the video, you might have noticed that I believe this character is none other than the god Freyr, Freya's brother as well as the ruler of Vanaheim and the elves. I've discussed why I believe this character is Freyr in my members discussion stream, but I'm sure no one wants to re-watch a 5 hour long video, so I'll quickly go over it here. The first detail that might prove this is Freyr are the marks on his arms. Now I know this is a little difficult to see in this fast paced clip, but if you stop the trailer at the right time, you will see that his arms aren't as smooth as say Kratos, in fact they seem to have burn marks. This is because many undisclosed years ago, Freyr traveled to Asgard with a diplomatic mission to teach the Asgardian gods how to harvest their crops using Vanir magic. At first, the Asgardian gods appreciated their new magical abilities, but something went wrong with the crops and Asgard was quick to point the finger towards Freyr. So they took Freyr to Odin's hole and attempted to burn him to death. Once Freyr regained consciousness, he crawled out of the still burning coals and snuck out of Asgard. By this point in the story, relations between Asgard and Vanaheim had become more and more unstable. But the burning of Freyr was a tipping point for Vanaheim, and so the great war between the two tribes of gods began. Despite him being a powerful god, he still appears to have his burn marks. Perhaps they never heal just like Kratos' scars, but he could have also chosen to keep them as a reminder of the evil Asgard committed against him. Another interesting detail that might prove this is Freyr is the missing sword on his back. With any other character, I wouldn't make a big deal about this sword missing. Maybe they dropped it during the battle, maybe someone stole it, maybe they left it at home. All of these could also apply as the reason for Freyr's sword missing in this scene. But there could also be a much more awesome and exclusive reason as to why his sword is missing. From Norse mythology, we learned that Freyr's sword has the ability to fight by itself. We have yet to see this ability in the God of War series, but we have seen depictions of it in some of the giant shrines as well as a mention by the Light Elves. So even though his sword could be missing because he left it at home or lost it in the battle, at least with Freyr, we can also say that the sword is not on his back because it could be back there fighting against his sister Freya. And if that's the case, this is gonna be one epic cutscene. Now the last piece of evidence that suggests the character Kratos is carrying is Freyr is the elves coming to their rescue. According to God of War lore as well as Norse mythology, Freyr is the ruler of both the light and dark elves, so it makes sense to see them coming to the rescue in this scene. This level of devotion to their lord can be seen in one of the notes you collect in Alfheim, which ends with a call of action for all elf kind to rescue their lost lord. So perhaps the light and dark elves will only be your enemies at the beginning of the game, after this rescue mission, they might join Kratos and Atreus' list of allies. So now I think it's fair to say that most likely this is Freyr. But now I have to answer the real important question. Why is Kratos saving him? I know the most reasonable way to answer this question is by saying, I don't know. The truth is, Sanamana could go any number of directions with the character of Freyr. Directions that there's no way I could ever predict. But I can give you an answer based on what we know from the lore of the series. 
And when you really look at everything we know about Freyr, you start to realize that Kratos might need him to either continue or stop the flow of time. And this all ties into this moment from the trailer. Fate only binds you if you let it. I've seen a lot of God of War fans going crazy over this moment, and I think rightly so. I mean, that effect of the daylight being ripped from the sky is truly breathtaking, and seeing Skull and Hati for the first time is sure to get God of War fans excited. But I haven't seen anyone talk about what's happening with the sun and moon. Why are they standing still? Okay, I know it's an eclipse, but this is a God of War eclipse. Someone or something did this. And luckily for us, Mimir might have given us a clue about it back in the previous game. Ed, how is this possible? My guess? Temporal magic. Dangerous stuff the High Vanir gods used to play around with. The ability to freeze time. Happened to be a favorite of New Ord himself, in fact. Used to? Why did they stop? Well, turns out stopping time keeps the sun and moon from streaking across the sky. Unfortunately, it does not stop the wolves that chase them. Always looking to sink their teeth in. For this moment in the trailer, we shouldn't be thinking about what the eclipse does. I don't think it does anything. An eclipse was just the coolest way for the artist at Santa Monica to depict what Mimir was talking about. That being a Vanir deity stopping time. But which Vanir deity would do something like this? This question is hard for me to answer because I still don't understand what's happening in this moment. If Kratos and Atreus are indeed starting Ragnarok, then I would say they needed Freyr's help to stop the sun and the moon in its place. That way Skull and Hati could catch them. I think this is the most reasonable theory based on what we know, but that's the thing. I suspect there's a lot more to Skull and Hati than just eating the sun and moon. We've never thought about this, but maybe Skull and Hati need to chase the sun and the moon in order for there to be a day and night cycle. We know from our world that the day and night cycle is pretty important to life on Earth. Maybe Ragnarok isn't started by Skull and Hati eating the sun and the moon. Maybe Ragnarok starts when the sun and moon are frozen in time, just like we see in the trailer. If that's the case, then this might be a scene from the very ending of the game. Kratos and Atreus putting the realms back to normal by restoring the flow of time. But what does this have to do with Freyr? Well, Freyr is still a Vanir god and very knowledgeable when it comes to anything time manipulation related. So maybe the magical arrow Atreus used to cast Skull to the skies was created or given by Freyr. This would be a symbolic scene as his sister Freya also provided Atreus with magical arrows in the first game. But now I know I've entered into the realm of fanfiction. Whether Kratos and Atreus are starting Ragnarok or putting everything back to normal remains to be seen. But something I'm pretty sure of is that a Vanir deity is behind this whole scene. Let me know what you guys think about this theory in the comment section below. Now as always, I would like to thank all of my members for supporting the channel monthly. I'm gonna start from the beginning, so I'm sorry if I mispronounced some names. Of course I have Anhad Miglani, Kenyan Moore, Rodrigo Borges, Long Live Gaming 1994, Son of Ragnar, Anthony Barrios, Alex JKR, Aussie Assassin, Stenkot, Edge, Noobmaster. There's so many of you guys and there's no way I could ever finish the list in this video. But I do want to thank all of you guys for supporting the channel monthly. I keep saying this, but you guys truly are the backbone of this channel. So thank you so much for allowing me to make these videos. I would also like to thank everyone who likes and shares my videos. I know it doesn't seem like much, but trust me, it really does help. And with that said, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And as always, remember, go forth in the name of Ragnarok.